All right, so we're compositing the underpainting with these watercolor elements, and I'm doing the rim of the hat now. And once we have that underpainting, then we'll be able to steal from textures and colors and add our own uh, painting over the top to refine it. But for now, I'm using my compositing know-how, the soft brushes, to blend some of this stuff in. I want the seam of the, the hair and the hat. Yeah, it's working pretty well. Okay. So now let's bring in some more. For this part, let's bridge them. By having consistent reference sources, you're also um, kind of necessarily limiting your palette, which is helpful for your underpainting. Gives you a sense of what your warms and cools will be and how far you can push things. Now, there's some places I want hard edges, but I can always paint in hard edges as well. So right now I'm going to use that contrast of the red with the green. I'm going to show the top of that brim of the hat. Okay, let's see. And then I'm going to use the clone stamp, nice and large, fully opaque, sampling from um, all layers. And I want to fill in some of these whites. So we're getting there. Okay. And I'll use a little bit of that dodging and burning. You know, we have a shadow at the top here, shadow near the bottom. This reference. Blend in this edge. This gives me something. And we can dodge as well. We can lighten. Lighten the mid-tones. Right at the edge. Let's merge those all together. All right, now we've got almost a full underpainting. Some little areas where we can use the, uh, the clone stamp. Maybe soften some transitions. Before we paint on top. Okay. 
And because we've merged it all into one layer, I can also erase away from these edges. And we can take the whole opacity down, let the sketch come through. We can even put it on a different blending mode. I'm going to let the sketch come through. I'm not sure what would be best there. Um, yeah, probably the darken. That way we can see our sketch marks and where things line up. Yeah. Now the goal is to have a portrait of her with some of the the energy and enthusiasm of, of modernism with kind of steely resolve and more believable more believable colors than this but also you know really kind of capturing her essence so what can I do well now that I have this underpainting to get me started I can make a duplicate of it you can see how that makes it bold, and I can burn on that duplicate. So for instance, I know the shadows are here on this side of her eye and in her hair. This is on a duplicate, but with my soft edge, just mid-tone burn tool. I can burn it there, I can burn under her jaw. shadow underneath this little epaulette. I don't know if it's an epaulette or not, but the thing that holds your gloves. And when we use the burn tools and the dodge tools, we tend to, it's just human nature to kind of overdo it. So that's why I always do it on a duplicate layer. Burn where her nostril is, the back side of her nose, around her lips. Have her upper lip, underneath her ear, her jawline. Part of her neck. And you see the burn tool and the dodge tool, it can only um, work with what you've already got in there, which isn't a whole lot. In some areas, though I like kind of these feathery textures that we can bring up in the top without, it's kind of effortless without trying too hard. And now what I can do is take that opacity, let's make it normal, take that opacity down a little bit. So it's just somewhat guiding what I'm doing. wonder what would happen if I merged these together right now. Yeah, it's not bad. Okay, so I've merged those together. Now what I want to do is take out some of the color where I know I don't need that color. And this is the, the prime area right there. So I'm going to take a big hunk of it, duplicate it with Command-J, and then go to Image Adjustment, Hue Saturation. Let's change the hue, see if we can get that to a green that we're happier with. Less saturated, less strong. There we go. Usually I'm all for intensities of color, but not when they're distracting from where I really want to be looking. 
Okay, so then I can merge that. It's a big difference, right? And before I merge it, I could play with the opacity. Yeah, we can give it a little bit of the warmth from underneath. That will just help it sit there a little bit better. All right, so I've got this fractured, really kind of interesting underpainting. I'm going to erase away the bottom edge. Everything's a little too sharp. Especially that, that white outline sharpness. And then I'm going to use the clone stamp a little bit. A little bit smaller. Not quite at 100%. I'm going to try to work with some of these spots that just aren't filled in. So her hair at the side is quite dark, so let's see. Let's take this, paint that in. Shape her brow a little bit. Again, instead of relying on different brushes, just relying on the, the source textures of the watercolor. Like for instance, this, this is a great little area to do some of these kind of flourishes on her hat. Some excitement and some texture up in the top. It doesn't take much. That'll get me started. Some of these deep shadows I can use as well. Nope. So remember, I'm sampling my clone stamp from all the layers. Okay. So let's see, is there any major part of the sketch that isn't filled in? So I'm trying to do a clone stamp right now. Again, not trying to be a slave to the reference, trying to really just bring life to my sketch. <laughs> 